Hey everybody, Dear really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Nor 9 Var Commons. And we are on Masamune and Koharu's story. We finally got things straightened out. <laughs> Although the plan is to wait. Ah, <sighs> don't you just love that? So now we get to have the tension of no relief for the rest of the trip. Although I'm sure things will happen, so... Well, right now we ran into Mikoto and she is distressed about something, so let's distract ourselves from our own uh, standstill by listening to Mikoto's story. So, you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. What happened, Mikoto? I've never seen her like this before. I think Mr. Sakuya might be better qualified to handle this than I am. Um, should I go call Mr. Sakuya? Sakuya will not come. He hates me now. What? No, he doesn't. Mr. Sakuya would never hate you, Mikoto. He does. What does it matter anyway? This is what I wanted. No, I don't think this is actually what you wanted at all, Mikoto. Mikoto, do you have a crush on Mr. Sakuya? Of course not. That is absurd. It's only the two of us here, you know. If you feel like you want to say something, say it. I cannot fall in love with Sakuya. I do not want him to love me either. Why not? When our journey ends, we will all be scattered across the globe. Why fall deeply in love with someone you know you have to leave? Mikoto, Mr. Masamune told me to keep this a secret, but with her feelings so terrible, I just can't. Can't you not tell her directly, just say, it might be possible? Mikoto, it'll be okay. Once we reach our destination, we'll still be able to be with each other. How can you claim to know that? Um, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to tell you any details. But I promise everything will be just fine. I believe that, so you can believe it too. It's okay for you to fall in love with Mr. Sakuya. No, it's not because of the prophecy thing. Or, well, you know, Sakuya saw the future. You know the story. Please, please keep this to yourself. Mikoto was hunched over the sofa, quivering. I laid my hand on her back and gently rubbed it. Her back was totally unlike Mr. Masamune's back, slim and smooth, where his was broad and strong. It seemed that no matter how much older and more responsible than the rest of us she was, Mikoto was still a young girl. Sakuya! Sakuya! Um... Oh, hello, Miss Yoko. Um, what kind of tea do you think would be good to help calm the nerves? Hmm, I can't think of a good one off the top of my head either. Which types of teas does Mikoto like best? Oh, um, hello, Mr. Sakuya. Mikoto prefers the mildly sweet ones. A black tea with a touch of milk and sugar might be the best, I think. Oh, okay. Thank you for telling me. I'll boil some water and warm some milk. How is she doing? She's having trouble sleeping, I think. She sat down on the sofa and hasn't moved. Oh, but I think if you were to talk to her a little, she might cheer up. I highly doubt that. A cruel, wretched human being like myself isn't worthy of speaking to her. You aren't wretched, Mr. Sakuya. You're a very nice gentleman. No, Koharu. I am not a very nice person at all. Everybody says that about themselves in this game. For whatever reason, Mr. Sakuya never did like it when people tried to compliment him, even though it was obvious how commendable he was. Everyone who talked to him on the ship knew him as a kind and considerate person. It was almost as if he was... Mr. Sakuya... It almost sounds like you're blaming yourself for something. I continually wish for the one I care about to love me, despite knowing it causes her nothing but pain. How can you call that kindness? Is it really cruel to want the person you like to like you back? I'm not sure what has happened between you two, so it might not be my place to talk, but... I can tell that you're thinking of her with every word that you say. Really? I guess I might simply be too frank with myself about what I feel. 
I scare myself thinking I'll pull her into the sordid mess of my obsession and desire. She's supposed to be more important to me than anything, but... Mikoto is feeling terrible and crying right now because of Mr. Sakuya. I'm sure she must be feeling the same things he is. But I couldn't say anything about that because Mikoto made me promise to keep it a secret. Both of them obviously have some very big issues. It isn't my place to stick my nose in and say anything. But I know just how terrible it feels to blame yourself for loving someone. I think that no matter who it is, everyone's most important person is always themselves. The only thing that can override that instinct is love. I can feel all the love in every word that you say, Mr. Sakuya. Hearing it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Do you really think I... I'm allowed to feel this way? Well, she is the most important thing in the whole world to you, right? Yes. She has been very important to me for a very, very long time. Saying that, Mr. Sakuya beamed a full, beautiful smile. There was no way that he was an evil man. Anyone would know just by looking at that smile that his feelings weren't ugly or sordid at all. If there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. I like both you and Mikoto a whole lot. I want you both to be smiling and happy, so if there's anything I can do about it, I'll help. Thank you, Koharu. I'm sorry to dump all this on you. I hadn't intended to speak to anyone about it at all. I guess I just needed someone to tell me that my feelings were okay. Where are you going to take that to her? When Mr. Sakuya pointed it out, did I remember the tea? Oh, right! I guess I should reheat this. Do you mind if I take it instead? Please, go right ahead. Thank you. Good evening, Nanami. Um, do you mind if I sleep here tonight? Sure, but weren't you supposed to be with Mikoto tonight? Um... I probably shouldn't say anything about what's going on between her and Mr. Sakuya. Did something happen between you two? Is Mikoto getting some Osaki on this route when she didn't get any in his route? N no, not me! Nothing happened at all! Not you, so somebody else. Um, er, actually, I decided that I wanted to talk to you about geology tonight. Uh, like right now, that's all. Will it take long? Yeah! All night, even! <laughs> Are you really going to make Nanami stay up all night talking about geology? Good morning, Nanami! It's time to wake up! You have to hurry up or you'll miss breakfast! I'll go eat later. Are you okay? I know we stayed up a little late talking last night. I'll ask to have some breakfast set aside for you, so you can eat it when you're ready. Koharu. Oh, good morning, Mikoto. I must apologize for chasing you from the room last night. No, that's okay. I don't mind. Were you and Mr. Sakuya able to have a nice chat? Yes. Thank you for listening to me when I had to get that off my chest. You're welcome. I'm just glad that I was able to be helpful to you. Not that there was much I could do to stop her from crying myself. They must be really special to each other. Er, uh, there is something I would like to tell you. I have not told this to anyone else. You see, I... I'm sorry, everyone, but I have an announcement, so please gather around. What could this be about? We haven't even had breakfast yet. Is it okay if we continue this later? Yes, yes, that is fine. I wonder what the announcement is. Are we almost at our destination, maybe? If so, that'd make me really happy. I hope this trip will be over soon, so we can all settle down and have fun together. Chapter 6 Rebellion Mr. Masamune began a matter-of-fact explanation. A disturbance had broken out. A certain group of people were trying to revolt. They'd taken up arms to overthrow their rulers, and a huge army was marching to their capital. Of course, not all of us will be asked to fight. Given our individual powers, some of us will help out behind battle lines. 
What do you mean, given our powers? Of all of us, we only know what Kagaru, Kuga, and Heishi can do. I know. I'm hardly one to talk, in fact. No one will be forced to reveal their powers. We are each to do whatever it is we can do to be of assistance. Those are the world's orders. The world has given us orders. We have no choice but to obey. The time frame is undetermined. We'll stay and help until the situation settles down, and then we resume our journey. What about Sorata? Surely you do not intend to take a small child with us out onto the battlefields. Of course not. They'll stay on the ship. In fact, I'll see to it that we can all come back here to sleep and eat as much as possible. We will arrive at the disputed zone shortly. Everyone be careful. Oh, were we going to have to meet Shiro again? How terrible! Koharu, let's have you go help out the first aid and relief workers. Okay! Nervous? I'm sorry. I wish we didn't have to put you through this. No! You don't have to apologize, Mr. Masamune! Uh, where will you be going? You aren't going out to fight, are you? No, thankfully. Kakeru has been assigned to the command center. I'll be stationed there with him. I won't be able to come see you too often. Will you be okay? Yeah! You weren't just putting on a brave face for me, are you? You really will be okay? Yes, Mr. Masamune. I'll be just fine. Well, that's sad to hear. Do you not need me around to make you feel safer at all? <sighs> She's trying to be a good girl for you, Masamune. I have to say I'm thinking about the future. I'll be thinking about the future. I'll be busy thinking about what we're going to do after the rebellion is over. I mean, once it's settled, we'll go back on our journey, get to our destination, and then we'll be able to spend lots of time together, right? Just thinking about this is enough to make you and this horrible time feel like it's flying by. Very true. The thought of you will be enough to help me keep giving my best, too. With that, Mr. Masamune turned around and was quickly swallowed up by the waves of people bustling every which way. Now that I think about it, what kind of powers does Mr. Masamune have? I never even thought to ask him about it before. Not that I would. I mean, I haven't tried to tell him about what my powers are either. You're the new helper the world sent, right? Well, get over here and help then. Oh, coming. Ugh. Oh my gosh! What a nasty wound! What happened to him? One of the rebels shot him with a gun. What's a gun? It's a really vicious weapon that can easily kill people even from far away. Our army bought a bunch of them too, but the merchant is starting to get really stingy about selling them. What's his name again? Ein? Air? Somebody is actually selling these terrible killing weapons? I hope this fight comes to a peaceful end. Enemy soldiers spotted. Everyone run! What are you doing? Hurry up and run! What about him? He's hurt and he can't move! Uh -huh. Mikoto! <sighs> Mikoto! What was that? Thanks, you saved our lives. Wow, whatever that was really did stop all of the enemy attacks. I never expected the Kuga family guardian herself to show up here. Kuga? You mean THE guardian who protected that one country for years and years? She's here to help us? Thank heavens! The world has sent the living goddess to save us! Really? Then we won't have to worry about any enemy attacks anymore! That's wonderful! Mikoto, are you okay? Why don't you go back to the ship and take a break? Keep it up, miss. Er, I mean, we would be grateful for if you could keep that barrier thing up for us, your ladyship. I may be able to protect you, but I can do nothing to defeat your enemies. Fighting them is your job. Of course. With your ladyship here now, we don't have to leave any soldiers in the town at all. What? We'll send them all into the front lines for one big counterattack, right now. Wait a minute. Mikoto, you're exhausted. Don't you think this is enough? I'm fine. I can keep going. Mikoto! Let's hurry up and end this farce so that we can get back on our journey. Her hand 
hands are trembling. All troops have reached their stations. Excellent. Then let's get this started. All troops, attack! <sighs> Phew, I'm exhausted. I'm really surprised she held out that whole time. What does that look for? Mikoto, are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. This was nothing. You repelled the enemy attack for an entire day. That had to require a lot of energy. There is no way that you are fine. That's right. If this keeps going on for days and days, you're going to collapse. I said I'm fine. Sheesh. Your idea of fine doesn't really mean fine. Goodness, spare me. You both sound much too much like Sakuya right now. If you are going to insist that I rest, I will. Will you at least get me some snacks? I'm really craving something sweet right now. Sweets are not good for you, Mikoto. They do bad things to you. Okay, come on, Nanami, let's go. Okay. <sighs> it was night as we walked into the dining room. We passed Mr. Masamune and Yuiko's room on the way there, but we didn't see any lights from their room. I heard both of them were very busy. I heard they may not have time to come back to the ship every night. No, I can't think about him. Right now I have to think about how best to cheer Mikoto up. Are there any sweets already made? We haven't gone grocery shopping all that much lately. I hope there's something really yummy that will help Mikoto feel better and give her strength. What is it, Nanami? Koharu, what do you think of Mikoto's powers? Huh? Um... I think they're really amazing. I mean, she was able to protect all those people at once. Yeah, her barriers are something that helps people. It, it makes me jealous. Nanami whispered that quietly, faintly. Jealous? Jealousy was something that I wasn't really all that familiar with. I thought that Mikoto's barrier power was great, but I didn't feel jealous of her at all. She used her powers for good things, and I looked up to her for that. I didn't have any feelings about her power. I do think it's much neater and better than my power, but... Hmm. I don't see any sweets. Drat! Should we go buy some in town? It's really late now. It's probably too dangerous for us to go out. Besides, we don't even know if they sell sweets there. Oh, right. I heard Kagami say once that Otomaru keeps a secret stash of candy in his room. Really? Yeah, the fact that his secret stash isn't actually secret makes it sound all the more like something Otomaru would do. I'll be right back. While she's doing that, I'll brew up a pot of tea. What are you doing? Oh, good evening, Mr. Akito. I was just making some tea. You girls really like your tea. Mikoto worked really, really hard today to help everyone. I wanted to do something for her to say thank you. Oh yeah, all those barriers, right? She'd better be careful. Keep showing that crap off and they'll use her like she's just a tool. A tool? You sit and wait. I'll make some cocoa for you to take to her. Oh, you will? Thank you. Mr. Akito, what do you think of Mikoto's powers? Huh? What was this all about? Um, Nanami and I were talking about them a minute ago. I don't think anyone needs any powers. As soon as somebody's got them, then whether they want them or not, they've got to use them. Even if they try real hard not to use them at all, everybody else will keep hounding them until they get forced into using them. But Mikoto looks like she goes out of her way to use her powers to help people. She doesn't do it because someone else orders her to. She wants to use them. You honestly think that? What? If you ask me, Kuga ain't choosing the damn thing she does. Sure, she probably thinks she's doing it all on her own will. But in truth, she's just getting peer pressured into it every single time. Kuga? You mean the Guardian who protected that one country for years and years? She's here to help us? Really? 
And then we won't have to worry about any enemy attacks anymore. That's wonderful. That's right. Each time everyone else looks to Mikoto. Worrying about me is utterly pointless. It is? Yes, I have used my power to protect countless people already. Protecting a ship or two of this size is a trivial matter for me. What's your noise say about Kuga's power? Nanami said that she's, um, jealous of it. Jealous? Really? Yeah. I think I agree with Mr. Akito. Whenever I see Mikoto using her barriers, it always looks like she's pushing herself so hard to keep going for everyone else. It looked especially bad earlier when she was protecting the town. Looking at it that way, I don't think I can be jealous of her power at all. I... You keep your powers hidden, you hear? I don't know what they are, but as soon as people find out, they'll find ways to use you. Mr. Akito filled three cups to the brim with warm milk. Then he added a generous dollop of honey to each one. Honey makes it taste better. Here, take them. Mikoto, I bought you some cocoa. Oh, thank you. Where is the Nami? She went to look for some sweets for us. At this hour, eating something like that right before bed will just make us fat. Oh, I'm sure just a little won't be all that bad. Besides, today was a, a rough day. Should I say anything to her? Maybe tell her to take it easy or take breaks? You know, I do not actually mind being on the battlefield as much as I thought I would. Mikoto! Perhaps it's because I go numb so quickly. The fear only lasts an instant, but once I have my barriers up, all I feel is pride. Really? Yes, my barriers are protecting thousands of people, and they all thank me for it. Every time I see their smiling faces, it just makes me even more glad. Before, I was only protecting buildings from natural disasters. But today, I have worked to actually save lives. I'm glad that I did. But, Mikoto, it's all so hard on you. You really look like you were ready to pass out from exhaustion today. If that ever happens... Do not mistake me. I never said I enjoyed being out there. I detest it, in fact. I entertain quite a few fantasies where all the weapons and politicians who encourage war and combat just disappear in puffs of smoke. Because that will never happen, I am thankful for my powers. They give me a way to protect innocent people from all those things. No matter how hard it is on you, my barriers do not just protect people, they also protect hearts. Everyone has at least one person who is special to them, correct? Unjust death does nothing but perpetuate hatred and generate grief. As long as those emotions are in abundance, war will never truly end. And until war is no more, Sakuya will never be able to relax and enjoy a peaceful future. I do not want to see people grieve because their loved ones were killed. Not ever. Mikoto's voice was quiet but determined. Something bad must have happened to her. It must have made her feel she had to say that. I feel like it was deeply rooted in her life. I bet it was something that she had been dealing with for a long, long time. There is nothing I can do to stop her. Protecting people is as much a part of her as breathing. Changing that will be really, really hard. It might even break her if not done carefully. Mr. Sakaya might be able to do it. Maybe he could convince her to run away without fighting and without breaking her. Though, I had the feeling that even he couldn't. I don't really know anything about their past. However, I figured if he was able to do that, he would have done it a long, long time ago. Why? They both care about each other so much. To Mr. Sakuya, Mikoto is more important than anyone. How come they don't see? Maybe... Just maybe the reason that protecting people is so important to Mikoto has something to do with Mr. Sakuya? That thought made me stop for a moment. It felt like if I followed that train of thought any further, I would be trespassing. I would be mentally going to a place they both wanted to keep hidden from the public. Besides, no one can say that Mikoto is wrong for doing what she's doing either. 
Protecting people is a very admirable thing. But Mikoto is really important to me. I don't like seeing her so worn out. Flames flickered all around me, almost as if they were trying to spur me on. Maybe I should use my powers too. No, no I mustn't. I decided that I won't ever use them again. Besides, my powers aren't like Mikoto's barriers at all. Fire is only good for... for burning things. Burning people. I have to do what I can to help people instead. We need your help over here. Okay. And check on those wounded over there later, too. If there aren't enough bandages, take as many as you think you'll need. Yes, ma'am. Phew. Taking care of the injured is tiring. My legs are going numb from kneeling on them so long. Mikoto has kept her barriers up all day today again. I hope she's doing okay. Mikoto was allowed to return to the ship much earlier than any of the rest of us. But her daily work drained her so much that even if she went right to sleep, she'd still be dead asleep by the time morning arrived. On the other side of things, Mr. Masamune and Yuiga never came back to the ship at all. It's so weird. Until just recently, we saw each other every day. Now it's been days since we even said hi. Oh dear, it looks like we're almost out of bandages. I'm going to have to go and get some more. And clean water, too. Gosh, we're running out of so many things. Aren't you going to take a break, Kaharu? Oh, hi, Mr. Sakuya. I think I'm going to check on a few more things before I go back. Mikoto is doing so much to help out, so I'm inspired to do all that I can, too. Ah. Poor Mr. Sakuya. Mikoto never took a break. She didn't listen to anyone asking her to rest. Um, Mr. Sakuya... Why don't you try to stop Mikoto from wearing herself out? I know that her powers are really important to this battle, so that as many people as possible are kept safe. But if she keeps pushing herself so hard, she might really hurt herself someday. I was belaboring the obvious, and we both knew it, but I couldn't help myself. I had to say it aloud. Nobody could get Mikoto to stop, but if anybody ever had a chance of getting through to her, it was him. Protecting people is very important to her. She thinks of her barriers as herself, standing in between the defenseless and danger. I think she would find having to watch innocent people die far harder than keeping her barriers up a little longer. Yes, I understand that, but this really is very hard on her. I'm worried. I know. Mr. Sakuyo was agreeing with me, but he said nothing about actually making any attempt to stop her. It felt very deliberate. It was typical behavior for Mr. Sakuya. He had been close to Mikoto for ages, and she meant the world to him. He always respected her choices, even though that often meant that his feelings came second. Leave Mikoto to me. Instead, why don't you go and see Masamune? I'm sure he would enjoy it. Really? Go on now. I saw him in his room, moaning with his head in his hands a minute ago. Really? Back on the ship for the first time in a while. He was moaning? Oh no! Don't tell me he's been hurt! No, no. That particular groan is usually reserved for when he's agonizing over you. Aww. Me? Yes, you. Go see him. I'm sure that would be the best medicine for what ails him. Mr. Masamune came back. Okay, I will leave Mikoto to you then. Kaharu. I would ask you to please keep one thing in mind. Hmm? You and I are different people. We are each capable of different things. I may not be able to help Masamune as you can, but when it comes to stubborn headstrong Mikoto, I'm the only one who can keep her under control. And trust me, I will. So don't worry yourself over her so much, okay? Okay. Why would Mr. Sakuya say something like that? Mikoto is my friend. I'm obviously going to be concerned about how she's doing, especially at times like these. Still, he said that he could control her, and that isn't a word usually used for people. But maybe it means that he can convince her to take breaks a little more often. Mr. Masamune... 
Young ladies shouldn't go into boys' rooms for just any reason. That was one of the things he had taught me. Until now, I had made sure to heed that advice. What should I do when I want to see him so much I just want to go in anyway? Huh. <sighs> okay. And right there, we're gonna have to take a break before we find out what happens when she goes in this, into Masamune's room. So, I hope you tune in to see what happens. Or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.